outside. It's good to see you all here this morning. We're anticipating a day of sunshine, a day of fellowship, a day of praising our Lord and Savior. I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. All peoples on the face of the earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. Surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. I am with you, and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. How awesome is this place! There, this is none other than the house of God. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Let us pray. Our loving God, our Father, we come to you this morning and we want to lift up our voices, lift up our hearts in praise to you. We are thankful for your faithfulness in the past. We anticipate the future knowing that your faithfulness will continue as you promised. And now we also celebrate in the present your faithfulness to us. And Lord, as we come before you to bring our praise, to bring our songs of joy and thanksgiving, we want to worship you in spirit and in truth. May our worship be acceptable to you this morning. Through Christ we pray.
we will have uh, John and Naomi Lederach, and they'll be joined by Phil and Lisa. And um, it really is a pleasure. It's, it's been great to see them this weekend. Actually, we've been so busy, we've had hardly a chance to talk, and I hope we do yet. But uh, I'd like to ask you four to come uh, to the podium at this time. And uh, as I went through high school with Phil, um, I mentioned on Friday night that Phil and I used to play tennis together, and I think probably while we were in high school and college, we never dreamed that we'd uh, be at the pulpit at the same time. And that's why I wanted them to come up here. I'm not going to say anything here, but I just wanted to make sure I could be at the pulpit at the same time that Phil was. Maybe all of our family would be here all weekend, but we were glad that John, Paul, and Wendy could be here at least on Friday <coughs> evening. They had to fly back yesterday, and uh, of course the meetings and so on that he's involved in. And Beth just finished teaching on Friday afternoon and begins another class and graduate work on Monday morning and even as late as Saturday, Friday evening, she called and said, do you think I still want to try to come? <laughs> And uh, in the end, she decided not to. But she said, tell anyone who knows me, hello. <laughs> she was only four when we left here, and so she really does not remember as much as John Paul and Philip remember. I bring greetings also from my mother, who is almost 95, and a number of you remember her. And uh, she said how very, very, very much she would like to be here. And then she grew a little bit sad and said, you know, that will never happen. But she does have very, very fond memories of you people here at Zion. They spent a year in Portland, as you remember, and so they did learn to know a number of you quite well. For our meditation this morning, I would like to read from the book of Psalms. Psalm 145, the first few verses, noting particularly the fourth one. I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. And of verse 4. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. You know, family reunions are really fun and sometimes a little painful because when we go back home, somehow our siblings and our parents have a way of putting us in the place we were at about 10 or 12 years of age. I know when I go home with my mother yet, she stands at the sink with me and tells me how I should peel the potatoes or uh, exactly which pot I should put them in. And I feel again like a little 10 or 12 year old uh, girl. Our family was together most of this last week and we had a wonderful time and I'm sure that Philip and Lisa could tell you as well as the others how we tend to put them back into the places where they were when they were uh, just young. The stories that we tell, the, the nicknames that we use, and by the way Zion has wonderful nicknames for some of their people here, all tend to define us and to tell us who we are. And as we have remembered our place in coming to this reunion, this spiritual family reunion, we have walked back through some of those times. At age 25 when we arrived, so very young, you all took us in and nurtured us, you parented us, you were spiritual mentors to us, and I remember very well many things that many of you taught us. We laughed together, we cried together, we pondered things, you corrected us, you instructed us, but most of all, you loved us and accepted us just for who we were and who we are. 
And I can't help but believe as the next hundred years comes along that you will continue to do that here at Zion as you proclaim through your lives the good news of Jesus Christ. Reconciling people to God through you, through your lives and the way you live. And I bless you all and thank you from the bottom of my heart for giving of yourself to us in the way that you did. And I pray a blessing on all who go out from here, and there are many, and even more for all who come into here and become a part of you. I pray God's blessing and your continuing love and acceptance of people as you have loved us and our family. About 16 years ago, I was introduced to this family of letterites. And it wasn't too long into my introduction to this family that I began to hear about Oregon and Zion. I had never been to Oregon, and I'd never been to Zion, so I didn't begin to appreciate the things that I've been able to see this last week. About a year ago, we talked about coming out here, and I started to get all fired up because I thought, Oregon, that's, I can't wait. I can't get in here. It's going to be really exciting. And now that I'm here, and I've been here for about a week, I want to let you in on a little secret. There are many beautiful things that I want to talk about, but I want to tell you what they didn't tell me about, so that you can understand how important what it is and what they did tell me about. John, Naomi, and Phil didn't tell me about Mount Hood and how you could look outside of 91 School off in the distance and see this gorgeous mountain with blue sky and snow on the top. They didn't tell me about that. They, they didn't tell me about this warm springs area where you can go and sit around this wonderful swimming pool that's warm and you're in this valley and there's desert around it and it's gorgeous. They didn't tell me about that. They didn't tell me about the gorgeous aquamarine water that you see at the coast. I couldn't believe they didn't tell me about that. I've never seen anything like it. It was beautiful. They didn't tell me about the rocks and the cliffs that you see there at the coast. They didn't tell me about Devil's Punch Bowl and how that is just breathtaking. Naomi, I can't believe, didn't mention the roses that you see all over the place here in Oregon. They're gorgeous. I went to Drift Creek, and Phil had told me about Drift Creek some, but he didn't tell me about those trees that you stand with your chin up, pointing to the sky to see, to them here in Oregon. And it wasn't until I got here on Thursday evening and started meeting you that I began to understand what Oregon meant to this family. And it became very clear very quickly that, that Oregon is not, it, I mean, part of it is the beauty that God has made, but this right here in front of me is what has made Oregon very special to this family. And I feel very, very overwhelmed with how you accepted me and took me in immediately, as if I was one of their own. And so I understand now what Oregon is to John and Naomi and Phil, and, and how your, your name has been passed through the generations to me and to our children, and that's just really neat. I get my shot at this podium now. <laughs> I used to come in here, Dad would be in his office, and I'd come and stand behind it. Except, <laughs> didn't look like this then. Uh, 30 years ago, on a typical Sunday morning, we'd be sitting right over here with John Paul and Beth and Mom, and we'd be watching this tall, young, dark-haired preacher up here. He still has one of the three. <laughs>
It's a different building. But it's the same church. The foundation that I built my faith on here at Goethe at Zion is the same foundation that my children are building their faith on there. Prayers that were said for us 30 years ago. There is still being an answer in the lives of my parents. In my lives. And in the lives of three children that you have met. For, some, for what they meant to the lives of my parents, what, they, what it, it has meant to me, and I thank God especially for what it means to those three children that are back in Goshen right now. And I wish I could say this without a dream. <laughs> but I know, I know there's a lot of love, and I know you understand. And I, Thank you for all those prayers. 30 years ago, and the prayers are being said today. And I'm glad I don't have to talk to you. <laughs>
And he said to the man beside him in the coach, he said, I'm afraid to look. We're rounding the corner now. And the old man next to him said, I'll look for you. And as the train turned the corner, he said, son, look. And there on the tree and on the fence and on the, for on the porch post were sheets hanging all over the yard, welcoming him to come home. You see, I like to think that's what Zion represents for a lot of families. And maybe that's what this weekend represents also. It's a time that you can come home. And it's a metaphor for the kingdom of God. As we are gathered here, it's a metaphor that from the kingdom is over. And our loving Father said to all of us, you can come home. And a weekend like this is a time of home gathering. Home gathering within our minds and within our hearts. As again, our families, some of them are not here. But some of them are part of the great cloud of witnesses that are gathering around us today. That have been part of this congregation for the last hundred years. And their bodies, the dust that remains, is next door to us. But it's this cloud of witnesses that are gathering with us. And we say, the white sheets of heaven are out. And the doors of Zion are open. And we can come home. I thank God that we have a God who calls us and wants us to come home. And I'm glad that each one of us here today can be part of this great home gathering. Because one generation shall praise your name to another. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful for this place, that you are here, you have been here, and because you are timeless, you are already out ahead of us, and we can walk in confidence knowing that we are following you. We thank you for this time of worship and fellowship and home gathering. And oh God, may somehow this time be just a bit of for each one of our lives as we open them to you in the home gathering hall. In the name of Christ we ask you.